Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Etsy Table Studio here with a new project today. This has been a project that came about from two different things. One was um, in handmadebookclub.com where they were doing miniature books. And of course, that's where I started was miniature books. And then the second part was I saw a lamp that I really liked on Amazon. I think I saw it somewhere else and then found a less expensive version of it on Amazon. So I bought the lamp and I will try to remember to insert a picture here of the lamp so you can see what I'm talking about. All right, so this is the way it's gonna go. I have always, 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 a ton of different painty papers and different things like that. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. I don't remember why I did this. I think this might have been for ICAD, a previous ICAD year that I didn't do, because I think these are about the same size as ICAD. Um, and I did, I, I did like whole sheets and then cut them down. So if, you see, if you look, some of them are very similar in colors and shapes. Um, and then I, I cut them down into the sizes for ICAD. I did a whole bunch of different colors, solids, things with prints on them, so on and so forth. So I had a bunch of these and I've been looking at them on my desk for about two months now and I'm thinking I need to do something with those but I don't know exactly what. Well, I have found the project. I want to fill up the base of my lamp with nothing but miniature books. I thought it would be an interesting thing here in the art room to, for inspiration, is to look at all those little miniature books. So I've taken one of these and I have cut it in half. Each one is five inches long. And I've taken it to two and a half inches. Two and a half inches. Then I've taken it again and I've measured on my board here. Sorry, my desk is a mess. I've been at it for a couple of hours. Um, I take this, which I know is three inches long and half of three inches is one and a half. So I did each one an eighth of an inch crease on either side of the one and a half inch line here. So I made myself a spine that's, I don't know, what is it? A quarter of an inch, not quite a quarter of an inch um, across. Just crease this real quick, make sure it's a good crease. So I just take it and half of the three is one and a half and I've gone an eighth of an inch on either side of the one and a half. That way I'm not really doing any measuring. I don't want to do a bunch of silly math. I just went, oh, that looks good. You know how I roll. <laughs> that sounds kind of odd. Um, anyway, so then I just take them, press it down. So I will have a little spine on each one of these. Each one of these makes two little books and I'll show you the two that I've already accomplished this morning. These are the two out of one sheet that's a five by three. Yeah, five by three. So let's see, this was the first one. What I did was I took the solid sheet and I doodled on it. I just took a white Signo pen and I did the little white leaves. Then I looked into my um, a f a collage fodder book and picked out this green leaf to put on here. I had a little tiny miniature green brad, and then I had some green thread. I took a sheet of paper that was an off cut from another project and cut two and a half inches across, I think two, I took two of these and cut them two and a half inches segments. Yeah, we'll do it in a second. 
Then um, I folded each of those in half, made little bitty um, signatures. And I, ba they're not sewn in straight, but it's okay because it doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not going to art inside of any of these. I just basically want the cover with a little bulk in it. A pretend book. Well, it is a book, but you know. Anyway, uh, so I just took a little sheet of paper, did the measurement, folded this in half, did it in half, then again, so I could have a middle and a top and a bottom. That was it. And then I just laid it down on the board and poked holes in it. Took uh, the green thread, poked a hole in the back of the book, tied a knot. And made sure that it was long enough to wrap around that little brad. And ta-da, we have a little miniature book. This is, as she looks for the ruler for the 100th time today, Fiddlesticks. So this is one, two, three, two and a half inches tall, and the half width is one and three quarters. And there's two signatures, and I think each signature has three little pieces of paper in it. Then I took the other half of the card, and I made this one. Dee -dee -dee. I found I wanted a contrasting color. Uh, as much as I like the green, it needs a little contrast. So I found two little brown leaves that I'd drawn in from fodder school from, oh my goodness, has it been a year? Maybe not quite a year. I don't remember. And then I had an orange brad. I did the papers out of the same strip here. Made little signatures. There's two little signatures in here. Sewed them in with green thread, which you can see they are not evenly spaced, but really don't care. Then I just took the leftover thread I had. This was a four ply thread, so I did two, two plies to sew in here and then two plies as my wrap around. And it only goes around here once because this was a scrap piece and it was the end. Whoops. There we go. So I have this one and this one out of one card. So that's the first two I started with. So earlier this morning, I took one of the brown colored cards like this color here. And I thought, well, I'll just do one signature and just sew it up the middle. So I doodled a flower and cut these down to a manageable size. And after I did this, I decided I really wanted a spine on the little books. I didn't want to do, for a lack of a better word, a pamphlet. I will finish these and I will put paper in these too, but I, I wish now I had done a spine and I guess I could, but then I would have that crease down the middle. So phooey, I'll just work with what I've already done. All right, so these I showed you, I put the little spines on them. Then this, right after I did the brown ones, I thought, you know, I really want a spine. So I took some blue cardstock that I had. Do I have more of this? It might be floating around on the table somewhere. Lord knows, I can't find anything. Anyway, so I took two pieces of the blue and did the same thing to these as I did to the green ones and then gave myself a little spine, took some fodder challenge flowers and a little plant in a pot. And then I will fill these up with paper, maybe only one signature, I, I don't know. We'll see how this goes. And then I will have a wrap around or some kind of closure for them because I don't want them laying in the lamp wide open like this because I don't want them to get tangled up with each other. So I would like it I think I would like it better if they had a closure on them. So those are my two little guys for this. So now I have two, four, six, eight. I have eight little books started. And I do have some other miniature books floating around in here somewhere. I think they have coffee paper, coffee dyed paper in them. So I'll use all the little excess mini books I have that aren't going anywhere. I will use them in the jar, i.e. the lamp and um, put them all in there and fill up the whole lamp base with little miniature books, which I love making. They are a little time consuming, but I like making them because they use up scraps of paper like this that were off cuts from another project. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do one of these books, I think, for demo purposes today because, no. 
husband's gone to take the dog for a spa appointment. And this is my time without the TV blaring in the black background. So one, two, three pieces of paper. And I hope that didn't fall on the floor. Ugh. Okay, so we're gonna take this. They're too tall, but I can't fit it in here yet. I just have to cut them down to bite-sized pieces. So this will be two and uh, two and a half. I think I'm doing two and three quarters is what I've done. I may have to cut off some of the ends, but I'm okay with that. One, two and three quarters. And two and three quarters. Let's make sure they're lined up. And then all I have is all the waste I've got from that paper is just these little bitty strips. I don't think I will do anything with them, although, you know, plans could change. All right, so I put this over here. I have three, two, three, three, four, and four. All right, so I know I'm going to make more of these. So I'm going to keep saving these little cuts like this, and eventually they'll make up more signatures that I don't really have to do anything with. All right, so remember when you fold your signatures, fold them all at once to help creep. And for you guys that don't know what creep is, it's when your paper, the outside of your, your signature, is total room. But as you st keep stacking more inside it, the other things kind of scooch out here. And that's what they call creep when they're not even and flush. It's creep. All right, so here we go with another little signature. Oh, I don't think I got that folded perfectly in half, but it's okay. So these are too large for what I have. So what I've been doing is I've been taking a pencil. Let me scoot this up a little, a hair. Come on, scoot up. There we go. And I just outline it and cut with the um, X-Acto knife. I do, I do draw the line here with the X-Acto knife for the corner here, but sometimes I go inside a little bit so it's not hanging on the outside of the, the book. So I'm gonna take my little and I try to do both of these at once because I have lots of these to make and I don't have time to fiddle around. Well, I do, but I don't want to. How's that? All right, so take yield knife and trim it down. It goes pretty quickly. What takes me a long time is trying to decide what I want to do. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can line this up so it looks nicer. Line this up in the corner here. And make sure this is lined up. Come on, off. With the dots on here. Whoops, don't scooch, no scooching. No scooching allowed. And if it's not perfect, it's okay. It doesn't need to be, it's just a fun project because I want to use up some of this paper it scooched. That's the only bad thing about doing this is if you accidentally scooch your ruler, then your line's not gonna be straight. There we go. All right, and see, I scooched. So let me go back and cut this mess off at the bottom. There we go. Let's see. To make sure it'll fit inside without stuff showing. Oh my goodness, looky here. Look at here. All right, so we have this. 
And then let me take this one. I think this is the one that I did the other book with. So I don't have to fool around with making another template. I'm just gonna put it inside. And now start looking for the poking tool. Oh, here we go. I, I didn't even mark anything because I've already done this. This will be my third one this size. So the template will fit everything that I make with this and I make this size, this template will fit. So I'm not going to try to reinvent the wheel every time I make a book. So if it hangs out a little, I'll just open her up and give her a quick little trim and call it a day. Okay, go in there. Ugh! Don't you know. Sorry. Was the pharmacy calling with the prescription that's been filled? Ugh. All right, there we go. So we have all these poked. Now we need to concentrate on this, which I just kind of stick it in there and pray. <laughs> I, do, I don't really think that this is going to be a mess, but you know, I tend to over overestimate how wonderful I can be. <laughs> my eyeballs being because I'm working with a quarter of an inch here so uh, not a lot of room to spare oh well that one went well okay how, how's that um let's see poke a hole poke a hole poke a hole so I kind of just take it up here and lay it flat I'm not even going to open it up lay it along the pencil line and I'm going to poke three holes Let's see, we're gonna do one, two, three. I am gonna poke through to make sure I can find them when I go to sew it. And then line her up and do it again. And then do one, whoops. Let's scoot that down just a hair. Two, three. One, two, three. There we go. Now they're not perfect, but I'm good with that. All right, let me go get some thread. Another good thing about doing scraps is that I'm using scrap threads that I've piled up that weren't quite long enough for other projects. I'm piling them in. Um, in a drawer in the desk, and then when I need a small little thread, I go back and refer to that um, that pile of mismatched whatever. And then I, ooh, I need to see to do this. Nah, not good enough. Um, so I just use the mismatchy stuff. Bad gummit, can't see. Uh, come on, go in, go in. I wonder if it's blocked with wax. No, evidently not. I got it in there. Ooh. So this, I, I, may, I was mistaken, I think. This is a three-ply thread. So I pulled one ply off, and I'm going to knot it. No, I'm not. <laughs> no, I'm not. Not yet. Um, I just folded it in half. Okay, so let's take this. We're just going to do the three-hole pamphlet stitch. And that'll be it. I need to find something to put on the front for a cute little doodad to look at if I'm looking at the lamp. I can see the decoration on the front or the fodder, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Is that the right hole? Why it is. Boy, that's never happened. Okay. Pull that. And then go into the middle. Where's that hole? It's kind of hard to see it. Because there's so much stuff on that. Where is it? Well, stinkers. I'm just going to poke a hole. Oh, I got lucky. <laughs> Speaking of lucky, I wish I was one of those people that won the lottery. I hear
here somebody in Austin won, uh, I think a million dollars. I want to know how I get on their friends of list. <laughs> okay, by the time the government takes their taxes, <laughs> they're not going to have much left. So I think it's at a 50, 45, 50% tax rate. All right. Since we don't have personal income tax here, this, the federal government's going to get their half. Believe you me, they're going to get their money. All right, so there's one. And here, somewhere in here, are the holes that are punched for number two. Oh, there they are right there. Okay. Wow. All right, this might be enough thread just to finish. Okay. And I don't care. It doesn't matter what's top and what's bottom in this instance because it's the equal amounts from the other from top to bottom in the middle, so it doesn't really matter which side's up, which side's down. Well, camera shut off. Well, I was trying to explain something to you. I have no idea what. <laughs> All right, so while the camera was, let, let's do this one. While the camera was reloading or copying to the disc, I went ahead and finished sewing in the signature, and no, they're not even. Then I found a brad in my little keeper thing here that I wanted to use. Sorry about the glare. Let's move that over a little bit. Um, so I, I'm going to put the brad in and I just kind of spread it out so it's vertical. Because if I did it horizontal, the brads might stick out that way and I don't want them to stick out. All right, so this one is finished except for it needs something on the front. And I need to thread the needle with the thread. Let's do it this way. And let's see, we had a needle. Oh my goodness. You know, mm, 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 mm. <laughs> my desk is so full of stuff, I don't know which end is up. And here we are fiddling around with threading the needle again. There we go. All right, so I'm going to tie a knot in the bottom. And I'm going to eyeball this to go around here, so that looks like a good spot right there. And just pull it through. And then I'm going to go around this way, this way. I don't know how many times I need to do this. One. Probably two is enough. Cut it off. But I don't want to tie it yet because I've, I've got to put something on the front. So again, while the camera was reloading, I went ahead and cut the rest of the paper that I have that's this size, plus that one spare I put to the side. Let's see what I have. One, two, one, two, three, three, and then one, two, three, one, two, own three. All right, so I have four piles of three. So that's one, two, three, and then one, two, three, ah, ah fourth one. <laughs> Okay, so that's the last of those large strips of paper. So the fourth one will be cut down into something smaller later. So I have enough to do two, four, six books, six little books. So I know now that I'm going to have three sheets of paper in each um, signature. So let's do this. Again, fold all your paper at one time. For creep's sake. Oh, and look, I didn't fold it. Ugh. Okay. Well, well. And there's that needle I was looking for. Okay. I'm going to have to cut it off anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. All right, so those two are together. I'm going to put them inside here. And again, I'm going to I go around it with a pencil. And I will undercut, put it, whoops, well, Vicki, get it straight, dear. Uh, I don't think that's in there straight. 
let's do it up a little bit from the bottom so that he has some headroom here. And I'm going to take a straight edge and I'm going to do it on this side of the line so that it won't stick out on the edge in case I undermeasured. And then, oh man, that's a diagonal for sure. Mm -mm -mm. Let's try to get this part straight. Go right down the line on the mat. Which side do we have here? Here we go. Might be time to change the blade. Okay, let's see what we got here. Fits inside, no overhang. Yay. Then we're going to let me just fast forward through all this. You've basically seen this all already. Okay, so now that I've got crooked as all get out <laughs> sewn together, I'm going to look for some points of interest in the fodder book. So let's take a look. I don't know if I really, I, I would like a contrasting color, but I don't really want to knock your socks off. And I'm not sure how many small things I have in here because I did them for like medium books, not teeny books. Um, let's see. Let's see. The thing is, it's hard to get this stuff out of here once you put it in here. There we go. I think I might like a mushroom. I was looking at this one last time. Oh no, it's too big. Okay. Well, shoot. Um, let's see what's in here. That's too big. If those are too big, this definitely is going to be too big. Nope. Alrighty. Those are too large. Uh, I don't want to decorate anything today. I'm, into the making and gluing and making it snippy. Snippy, hippy, snippy. Okay, so back to the drawing bird of small. Let's see what we got here. I don't think there's anything that's small enough because these aren't that wide. Yeah, that's not going to fit. And I don't, well, I could do it that way. Straddle it underneath the, um, yes. Psst. Straddle it underneath the bread. 
let's glue it down and call it a day. All right, let's see what we got here. I think this is the way I had it. If not, that works anyway. Let's get this pin out of my mouth. All right, so there's that. And then I'll wrap it around and then around the brad. Maybe. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> that went well. Uh, I got the brad in there a little too tight, huh? Yep. Okay, so let's undo this and let's loosen that little brad. There we go. Maybe that'll help. I don't guarantee anything at this point. Oh, son of a gun, it's not going under there. Okay, so we're just going to roll... <laughs> No, we're not. We're determined to make this brad work. Urgh. Oh, look. It, look. It worked. Yang. All right, so that's that one. Where's the other one? Right here. Did I put the brad in here? Yep, I did. Okay, so now I need to look for a decoration. Let's put this away. I didn't want the front of every book to be the same. I don't think that the red's going to, or pink's going to, well, it says red. It looks more pink. Too bad I don't have any small black ones. Oh, well, you know what? I do have this. That'll do it. You know, you know, sometimes you go shopping and you're looking for something. You don't know it till you see it. Well, this is how I feel about this project. <laughs> I didn't know it till I saw it, but I like the leaf, the black leaf. Ta-da! So, here we are. We have managed to do one, two, three, four books out of two iCADs. Here are two more that are going to be done out of iCADs. And this also was cut from iCADs. And I think I might have some more of this left over somewhere. I just don't know where it is. My desk looks like a bomb went off on it, so it's a wonder I could find anything at all. All right, so there we go. And I'm going to keep doing this and keep doing this until I fill up the lamp and use up little bits of paper from my, you know, like I have all of these offcuts, and they will be good for this kind of a project so that I can use up these little bits and not feel guilty about, you know, having them. But I will need to change the size of my book. Let's see, are these the skinny ones here? These are the smallest ones, I think, yeah. All right, so this right here is going to be too wide. Not wide enough and yet too wide. So this will be one that I'll need to cut down so that it'll fit in these little bitty books. So these are these are these in half. So I think I have another half around here somewhere. Yep. So that'll do it for my video for today. Thanks for watching everybody and I hope you enjoy seeing the lamp. Once I get the as many books as I can and I get the bottom piece to the lamp that should be coming in the mail, I will show you how I'm going to put it together. It's very odd. I ordered a lamp that has no bottom to it. So my friend Carla generously ordered the bottom for me and they should be coming. And then um, once I fill it up with all the books, then I will hot glue the bottom of the lamp on and then it'll be finished. So that's it for me for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Bye-bye.